Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabori here. <sighs> and wow. It's been a while since we had the worst comic book movie ever. But I never thought it would be the 2015 reboot of a series that's been best known in the Marvel Universe called simply Fantastic Four. Or as some people like to refer to as Fan Four Stick. Well, this movie is nothing Fan Four Stick about it, nor fantastic either. Because I never thought that this movie would be ten times worse than Batman and Robin, Catwoman, and even Superman Four, by far. Well, our prayers have been answered. Because. I was completely bored to death having to watch this movie. There was no excitement. There was no energy. There was no fun. I mean, despite of a great cast that we had in this one, I was amazed at how much trouble that this movie went into. Especially when they have a director who did Chronicle, the found footage uh, action film that frankly, I was not a big fan of. I mean, it's not a bad film, I just didn't think it was that great. To be honest. But wow. I can't believe this movie was going to turn out as bad as I thought it would be. I mean, yes, the first trailer, which was a teaser, wasn't that interesting, but... I was almost going to give it a chance once I saw the second trailer. And they had a lot of good scenes in that trailer. That's sad to say, it's not in, in the final project. Yes, I was expecting to see all of those scenes in this version that I just watched. Wow. No wonder. Fox totally destroyed this idea. And they really ruined it completely. Yeah, because I know this movie had a very troubled production between Fox and the director. Because the director actually got fired from doing this. Because of his erratic behavior and the fact that the studio did not like his original cut. Yeah, I don't know, but it's, it's amazing that so far we have four movies already. Yeah, four movies of the Fantastic Four series, and none of which are any good. I mean, okay, I can deal with the first two films. Yeah, the ones that Tim Story had directed. At least they had some fun and excitement that went into it. I mean, it had an interesting cast. I mean, I know Jessica Alba was miscast, but I can take it for what it's worth. Um... The 1994 unreleased Roger Corman version, yeah, was just, um, hey, it did have something that almost has the spirit of the comics, but, but it seems like they were still having trouble making this movie. But this one just seems like, I don't know, I mean, it, it looked interesting. I guess they just wanted to have a serious tone in the tradition of all the other films we've seen. I mean, maybe they're trying to give it sort of a a Batman Begins feel towards it, or Dark Knight for that matter. Hell, I mean, maybe it was trying to be like The Amazing Spider-Man when it comes to this. But this one failed in so many levels, and it didn't work. Not at all. And it's a shame, because I really did want to like this one. It's just sad, really. It, it, it's just... This whole thing is sad. So, let's get right to the review to see what's wrong with this movie. It stars Miles Teller, who just uh, went on to do good films like The Spectacular Now and Whiplash. Michael B. Jordan, who was in the movie Chronicle. He also went on to do the film The Fruitvale Station. Kate Mara, who was in that terrible superhero-type movie called Zoom. Yeah, I remember her. 
Jamie Bell has been best known for the role in Billy Elliot. Um, he was also in the movie The Avengers of Tintin. And he did the voice of Tintin that Steven Spielberg had directed. Toby Cabell, Reg E. Cafty, Tim Blake Nelson, Dan Casanelta, you know, from The Simpsons, and Tim Heidecker from Tim and Eric's Awesome Show, you know, which is on Adult Swim. It's written by Jeremy Slater, Simon Kinberg, and Josh Trank, who's also the director of this movie. Yeah, best known for Chronicle. The movie begins during their childhood days at a small town somewhere in New Jersey. A young genius named Reed Richards was working on his latest assignment at Mr. Kenny's class, yeah, which his grade school teacher is played by Dan Kessinelta. Decided to work together as a team with his best friend Ben Grimm, who has been abused by his older brother, on a prototype teleporter, which basically they bring in an object that they need to use to place it and transport it into a different size. Yeah. Which unfortunately they had to use the power of, of energy to actually be able to to have the entire teleporter to work which actually causes the entire electricity to be shut off that's when they were doing that experiment uh, at home and yeah that didn't seem to work out but as soon as they got older you know both played by Miles Teller and Jamie Bell they were actually working on the teleporter for their science fair which turns out to be a complete disaster Yeah because it actually broke the, the basketball cube. Eventually, it attracted the attention of Professor Dr. Franklin Storm, who's played by Reggie Caffey, who happens to be the director of Baxter Foundation, a research institute for young prodigies everywhere. Yeah, so Reed and Ben was recruited to join them, along with the aside of, of Storm's children, a scientist named Sue Storm, is played by Kate Mara, who basically just works on her computer while listening to music. Yeah. And a technician named Johnny Storm, who's played by Michael B. Jordan, who just uh, started driving his own car that he just built on by scratch. Where he wants to go in drag racing with those two. Yeah, he's just trying to be as as smooth as possible. Yeah, he got stuck on, on the flame floor and then and eventually he crashes you know, once he was making up to that speed yeah anyway they started working together by completing a quantum gate that's designed by Storm's protege Victor Von Doom who's played by Toby Cavell who agrees to help yeah due to his uh, feelings for Sue yeah because I know he actually falls in love with her so their experiment had became a huge success, and the facility's supervisor, Dr. Allen, who's played by Tim Blake Nelson, had assembled a group of astronauts to venture into a parallel dimension known as Planet Zero. And since the astronauts themselves uh, failed to join the expedition, Reed, Johnny, and Victor recruited Ben to commandeer the Quantum Gate and, and embarks the unsessionary voyage to Planet Zero. And once they were there, and when Victor was trying to collect a sample of one of these substances, um, the ground has erupted with green lava. And then as soon as the whole planet decided to go completely erupted, Reed, Johnny, and Ben had returned to the shuttle just as Sue brings him back to Earth. But Victor is being left behind as he falls into a collapsing landscape. And then the machine had exploded alternating Reed, Sue, Johnny, and Ben on a molecular genetic level affording them superhuman conditions and abilities to be on control so they've given superpowers and are now simply known as as we speak Mr. Fantastic, Human Torch, Invisible Woman and The Fiend so 
We decided to escape from the facility and he becomes a fugitive while desperately trying to find a cure to help him and his friends out since he's pretty much blaming himself for all the cause that happened. So one year later, Sue actually located Reed in Central America and it's being captured by Ben who's becoming a military assist along with Johnny and Sue since they're already being filled with specialized suits and I know Reed actually had one later. They decide to keep their conditions and abilities to help them stabilize control. So Reed has been brought into Area 57 where Dr. Allen constricted him to another portal to Planet Zero to exchange by giving Reed the necessary resources to find a cure. But once they arrived to Planet Zero, Dr. Allen's explorers had found Victor who's been fused with his spacesuit and now he can control all the elements and he's now simply as we speak Dr. Doom. But he now has telekinesis abilities to bring him back to Earth which driving him insane by the experiment and believing that the human race needs to be destroyed so they can rebuild Planet Zero in his image. So then Victor escapes started killing all the scientists and soldiers in the base including Dr. Allen and Professor Storm and he tries to go back to Planet Zero by using the Quantum Gate with Ben, Johnny, Reed, and Sue in pursuit. They started fighting with each other once uh, Victor activated the portal of, of Planet Zero using all the structures that he made while in the realm and he begins consuming the landscape of Earth. He has to confront all four of them by a, a huge destructive battle. So then they all had to stop Doom from actually destroying everything on Earth by using the portal's energy beam. So that's pretty much how the film really goes for because that's what they do. They just basically just destroy Doctor Doom and then once they did that they return back to Earth and they're being awarded by Heroics given a new base of operations by the United States military and they're going to be able to use those powers to help people adopt the mantle of as we speak the Fantastic Four oh boy you know the movie is bad when you see Doctor Doom using his telekinesis powers to kill all the scientists and soldiers by exploding their heads. Yep, that's right. He actually exploded all their heads throughout the entire facility, causes all these blood stains that's been shooting right into the walls. I mean, you're thinking to yourself, is this a PG-13 rated a superhero film? It looks more like an R-rated horror film to me. Yeah, that could probably work. Jeez, I mean, what were they thinking? Seriously. And if that wasn't bad enough, you actually have a kid calling Reed a dick after he destroyed a toy airplane during the science fair. Unbelievable. Oh, and they got a lot of stupid jokes that just seems pretty lame but the whole film was just an incredibly huge bore and I'm not surprised it could have been done so much better than this it's no surprise because this had a terrible screenplay by three of these guys that's right three of these guys Simon Kenberg Jeremy Slater and the co-writer and director Josh Trank. Wow, they had no sympathy at all into building this what's supposed to be a good superhero reboot. Yeah, that's based on the comic by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby. Wow, just wow. They they just couldn't get anything right in this movie, not at all. The characters could have done so much better, despite of how good the cast was. They just seemed like they are just walking and sleepwalking throughout the entire role in this movie. None of them were 
any entertaining whatsoever. I mean, I wanted to love them. I want, I really did, but I just couldn't care. A Tim Blake Nelson is totally wasted as Dr. Allen, you know, and and it's just a shame to actually see him, you know, get stuck in a role like this, you know. And then we get an actor who comes across as sort of a boring version of Morgan Freeman, if I ever saw one, you know, as Dr. Franklin Storm. Yeah, I know it's Reggie Caffey. That's his. That's his name. Oh boy, it, um, I gotta say, the CGI in this movie wasn't as fantastic as I was expecting it to be, and it wasn't. And there wasn't any good action scenes at all. I mean, what the hell? All we see is Ben arriving at Central America just to find Reed and beat the living shit out of him, saying, "I thought you were my friend," or something like that. Yeah, while well, Reed is just going around, you know, trying to find a cure, sort of running around like a wimp at this point, since he blames himself for all the damage he just caused. You know, come on, I mean, is that the best they can come up with? I mean, because all the scenes that was in the trailer were missing, and those were the best parts. But no, we just get this fucking scene, or even the other scene that was from the trailer, where... You know, Ben is just swinging around the tank. I mean, is this the best they can come up with these days? I don't understand. I really don't. Uh, the acting was pretty atrocious as far as I'm concerned. I mean, coming from this cast. Um, they're just giving him some shitty dialogue, that none of which were any funny or, or any entertaining at all. It sure is missing one word, actually, and I like to say it. Excitement. It's supposed to have a lot of fun and energy that went into it to make this movie look even better. Because they're supposed to have comedy elements towards it. That was the whole purpose of Fantastic Four. So, like, almost in the tradition of all the other Marvel comics, because they're supposed to have all that. It only has, like, a few of these. That's it. The whole film is just a hundred minutes of pure boredom. They even got Doctor Doom looking like a glowing robot instead of having to wear a mask and costumes and all that. I mean, yeah, he did have a costume, but but he just looks like a fucking glowing robot. It doesn't look interesting at all. Come on, I mean, and Doctor Doom deserved better than this. He's supposed to be a strong villain that just does what he does best you know he goes around destroying everything that he wants and he wants to take over the world by storm no they just have to make him into as we speak another boring villain they always do this man I, I don't understand I mean I, I know the, the the first two films you know they did make Doctor Doom look like a a jealous guy you know in a mask and yes he you know because I know he's always you know jealous all the time although that maybe that was the problem too but come on I mean geez couldn't they do anything better for this character seriously and you know what really sucks though was that I mean, before this movie came out I saw the trailer where they actually had all the deleted scenes and I couldn't believe it myself because they're not in the fucking movie there was that scene where they actually dropped the fame from the helicopter going all the way down into the ground just to fight all these bad guys. Yeah, because a lot of bad guys were sh actually shooting him, you know, actually blocking all these these uh, bullets in his chest. Because he is bulletproof, you know, he's made out of rock. I mean, and he actually kicks ass in the trailer, but not in the fucking movie that I saw. What happened? I, I just couldn't believe it. God, it's no wonder this movie had a trouble production. I mean, yes, especially with the director, because he actually uh, had a fight with the studio. The studio actually took over his project since they hated his original cuts. Especially when the house got destroyed, they only cost that amount of money. Yeah, it cost like, like around $10 million, I think. Could be wrong, but uh, who knows? And and he got fired for the job after that. 
because of his erratic behavior. No wonder. I, I, I just can't believe it. I mean, not to mention he got mad at, at the cast and crew for all of this, causing the whole thing to blame it on everybody. So, yeah, it's no wonder because Josh Trank was originally going to be directing a Star Wars movie, you know, before it got took over by J.J. Abrams. Yep, that explains it. No wonder this movie's bad. This movie is sad. It really is, because I wanted to love the characters in this version. You know, because they were very smart, intelligent, and very heroic. You know, despite the fact that they had those superpowers. You know, that they had trouble with until they actually controlled it a year later. And they would have done this movie so much well if it didn't go for this this shitty screenplay and all this other crap. And they're going to make a sequel. Out of all the negativity that this film has gotten so far, we're going to get a sequel. Yeah, I don't know if it's going to be even better than this version, or it's going to be ten times worse. Well, let's see what happens once the sequel is made. I'd rather watch the first two films of Fantastic Four, and yes, even the 1994 unreleased Roger Corbin version over this any day. And I mean it. I'd rather watch those instead. Because this one is without a doubt one of the worst superhero movies I've ever seen. And I cannot believe it myself. And yes, it's worse than Batman and Robin. Although, frankly, Batman and Robin can still kiss my back credit card ass. <laughs> So that's what I would say about Fantastic Four, or simply Fun Four Stick, and I give this piece of fucking Four Stick out of my ass zero stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later, much later. Bye.